Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now, welcome to the month of October. Praise God. Listen, if you haven't joined the prayer meeting yet, come on now. The link is on the screen. Join us. Join us for the next watch. See, the next watch is going to be by 9 a.m. and then 12 noon and then 3 p.m. and then 6 p.m., 9 p.m. and 11.30. Why don't you just join us already? Praise God. Join us and, and see. We're having a great time already. Praise God. So now then, so we, we are talking about Job. Oh, bless you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for this month of October. Oh, I, I see rain of blessing. See, as I was speaking, I began to see rain, rain, rain. Praise God. But I know this is not just physical rain. I'm seeing blessings, 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 blessings. Praise God. You know, you know, we, you know, naturally, you want to think after coronavirus, the world is going to go through a period of economic, you know, disaster. It is time for God to bless the world with his children. That's what the Lord is saying for the month of October. It is time for you to bless the world with the blessing that God has placed inside of you. So what do you expect? I expect you to rise up in whatever you do. I expect you to see the lights and, and, and rise up. I expect you to take... I mean, God is going to open your eyes to things you're supposed to do. And when you rise to do it, the blessing of God is going to come upon it. Praise God. And while God is also preparing and taking some of us into true riches, now that's the perfect place to live. So, Father, we thank you for this month of October. And we receive the rain that you have sent. It's falling on us. It will not spare us. Lord, we don't run from the rain. We breathe. We, we, we dance in the rain. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, this month, Lord, everything that is for us has been given, and we will see and receive it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. So, so we, we are talking about Job. And we, let's, let's see how we can conclude on Job's story. There's still a lot to see from Job's story. Now, yesterday I was telling you something very important. That when the challenge, you see, when, when you get to that point where you've worked perfectly with God and you just reach the edge and you don't want to just complete your obedience. Now, at such times, according to God's mercy, he sends the devil your way. So Satan is still a messenger of God till this day. Yes! How? Oh, yes. <laughs> but the challenge with that is this. When Satan comes, everything around you that is not standing on righteousness, he will take it. Because at that point, you have no control over. Now, now if, you, if you were the covering for your family, see, because you work with God righteous, you work with God righteously, right? And then, because you work with God righteously, God protects your life, and he protects everything you oversee. See, like Job, he said, you have blessed his house and everything that he has. So, the, the, the covering of God comes upon it. But when you get attacked, when I mean attacked now, you see, like Job, he had no control and there was nothing Job was going to do about the devil. Nothing. There is no prayer Job was going to pray at that time that will save him from the hand of the devil. Now, at that time, everything in Job's life that was not standing on righteousness Satan had been given authority to take it away. Now, Job's children were depending on their father's righteousness to survive. You remember the story. Whenever they had their party, you know, they would go do their, their stuff. They would party and do all sort of drunkenness and do whatever they like. It's their father 
when they are done, that will go before the Lord and say, Lord, please, I make this atonement for my children. See? So he was atoning for their sins. Please, because of me, have mercy on them. Don't let any evil befall them. So, and God will honor him. Yes, God will honor him. The same thing with you when you pray for your family. God honors them. Everybody under your watch that you pray for, they may not be walking in righteousness, but because they honor your words. Yeah. See, they will be protected. They will be blessed. That's why you find, even unbelievers, sometimes you find when unbelievers are, they are unbelievers, when I mean unbelievers, they are doing all the wrong things you can think about. But because they make up their mind to honor a servant of God or a child of God, and then they connect their blessing to that person's life, they will keep prospering. Now, other people will look at it and say, this man is doing evil. He's doing wrong. I know the business is doing. But see, it seems the guy is still prospering. Yes, he is prospering because this man this righteous man is overseeing him. So he has brought himself under that which belongs to the righteous man. So Satan cannot touch him. Is that how it works? Yes, that's how it works. But he said the challenge is this. The day that man covering you comes under attack, you are finished. Because Satan will not spare you. He wants to use you as a scapegoat. He wants, he wants to use you to hit at him too. So you are attacked. So that's what happened in the story of Job. So all his children were cleared. No one survived. Because there was no protection over them anymore. So that's why I told you yesterday, it is just good. You walk, when God says, give out everything, just obey. You'll save yourself a whole lot of problems. <laughs> it is God. Yeah. Now, that's how Satan came in and he cleared everything. But you see, I want, another thing in, in the story of Job I want you to see. Now, when you read the whole story of Job, the whole book of Job, the Bible said Job had three friends. Wonderful guys. They were now think of think about this. Job was a perfect man. Let me show you this. Chapter 2, verse 11. Job chapter 2. Verse 11. Now, when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came from, from they came everyone from his own place. Now notice it says Job's three friends. That doesn't mean Job only knew three people. No. These were his real close companions. Now, think about if Job was a perfect man before God, think about the three people that would be the topmost friends in his life. You want to know that <laughs> these were perfect men also. These were men who were blessed by God. These were men who loved God and feared God and eschewed evil just like Job. Because if you're a righteous man, the people you call your closest friends, they must be like you. So how do I know they were righteous men? Because they heard the voice of God. Yeah, the, read the story. God spoke to each of them. But well, guess what? These were Job's three. So these men knew Job in and out. But then they came to Job. Look at what happened now. It says, uh, Now when, when Job's three friends heard of all the evil that had come upon him, they came everyone from his own place. And then he listed the place and stuff. Let's leave all that. And it so, says, For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. So when they heard the story of what happened to them, they began to call themselves. See, send messages to one another. Say, Hey, have you heard of what? Well, man, let's go and say, okay, When are we going? Let's go next tomorrow. Okay, fine. So where do we meet? Well, let's meet at social person's house. Then we'll all go together. All right, fine. Okay, so they, have, they, were, they, were, they had met and they've agreed and now they are coming. When they lifted up their eyes from afar off, when they lifted up their eyes afar off and they knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept and they rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon 
his, their head towards heaven. For they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights and none speak a word unto him. For they saw that his grief, his grief was very great. Did you see that? <laughs> I want you to picture this. His friends came and when they saw him, you know, like, whoa, we're going we're gonna to come for I'm, I'm sure they must have discussed, what is it? Let's we'll put money together and help his business. Which, which business can, you know, the, the cattle business. Oh, yeah, um, I have some cattle I can give him to start again. And they, these were his friends. But when they came and they saw him, ah! And the Bible says, they rent their clothes. <laughs> They rent their mantles, carried ashes upon their head, and sat down with him for seven days and seven nights. Nobody opened his mouth to speak. I know. And all the thoughts go, you know how they were thinking from where to where? Job, God, how? What's going on? They are liver. Failed. You, you don't even know where to start to help this man. You you can't. You see, if think about it. Now they spent all the. Is it wait? When you begin to read this story now, <laughs> they they when they, when it, Job was the first person to speak actually, and then he began to curse the day he was born. He began to speak and speak and speak. And at some point, he provoked them to start speaking, and they they, they began to say, no 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 no, Job Job Job, calm down before you start accusing God. Relax. Wait first. I don't think God is that wicked. Uh, there must be something wrong somewhere. Something, no, Job, come on now. I mean, God, we know God now. We know him. I'm telling you the truth. There are troubles you will get into. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Even the people who have the means to help, they will look at you. It will not come to their mind to help you. Rather, they will, they will, they will be too puzzled with what how? I'm telling you the truth. They want just to say, okay, you know what? This is what I did wrong. <laughs> now it makes sense. Job, what did you do? Nothing. Let God come down and tell me if he had seen any iniquity in me. Job spoke like that. I said, no, Job, Job, don't talk like that. He don't see like God. No, Job said, no, 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 no. In my thoughts, in my words, in my actions, I have always seek to please the Lord. So, where is this coming from? You see, because Job was still thinking. He hadn't realized it yet. He was thinking that God told him. You know, that's how these things work sometimes. He was thinking that God told him to give out everything he had. He, did, he refused to give it, so Satan came and took it away. But you see, he didn't know that there was a plan. For, see, the reason God was telling him to give away everything he has is because God had planned to bless him a hundredfold. So he was still thinking that the whole give out everything was part of the judgment that God wanted to bring on him. That was what he was thinking. So they continued like that and continued until when God was tired of them talking anyhow, he showed up and he began to speak. Now let me show you something in ah in chapter 42 the book of Job And when God finished speaking Job started speaking they said then Job answered the Lord and said I know that thou canst do everything no that you can do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. This was Job's confession. He said, Lord, I have been wrong. I repent. And when God, you see, he got to that point where he believed that, no, 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 Lord, truly, you are the righteous one. 
you are good. So I repent. And then what happened after that? He said, wherefore I have, and, and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, that the Lord said unto Eliphaz, that's his friends, and he began to talk to them and told them, go offer sacrifice, I will accept Job's person. And look at what happened next. And verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now look at verse 11. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also, every man, notice, every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So, look at that word, so. The Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning for he had 14 and then he began to list all the things that Job. So he says, so, how? This thing. The first prosperity of Job, he can tell you exactly how it came. The second one, People were just coming from everywhere and giving him gifts. And he became two times richer. That's what the Bible says. He became so rich again. But this second one, this is true riches now. Because you see, this continued for the rest of his life. It's not one day thing. It's not one month. Thing. This continued for the rest of his life. People just kept coming, giving him gifts. Oh, Job, I had what happened to you three years ago. Sorry, I couldn't make it. Oh, well. Here is his gift. You know our time is up already. Praise <laughs> God. Listen. Listen. Aim for true riches. That is what the story of Job has shown to us. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then. <laughs>